I code custom studies in Thinkorswim like the one you're seeing on the chart behind me here. And I have a website where you can access all my codes, but I don't want to be the guy gatekeeping the information. I don't want to be someone pretending like you have to go sign up on my website to know anything about this. I want to actually teach you all how you can do it yourself as well. So in today's video, I'm going to go over step by step how you can paint arrows and other shapes on your thinkorswim chart using code. Sound good? Just hit the like button for me and I'll jump into it. So let me give you a very common trading scenario. Someone wants to have an entrance when the nine simple moving average crosses above the 20 simple length moving average and the closing price has to be above the 200 simple moving average. That's a very common trend continuation trade entrance scenario. But doesn't this chart look kind of ugly? Isn't this way too busy? Doesn't this look way cleaner? You can now see there are buy up indication arrows where that situation would be true. Let's go over how you create this. So I've cleared everything out back to a blank slate on the chart and let's go ahead and hop into a think script editor. So if I go to my studies tab, edit studies, we are obviously default under the studies tab, which means when I hit create, we will be creating a study. Go ahead and hit create and that's going to open our window here. I like to close this reference, just get out of my way. And let's just go ahead and hijack this plot data that is already set up here. Now it does need to be set to plot. Of course, a lot of code you will see, uh, you know, defined, defined data equals whatever. That's just if you want to use a parameter later in the code. Plot means that of course, it is actually going to plot this, you know, parameter that you define actually onto the chart. So plot data equals, let's go ahead and get rid of close and let's go ahead and type in what we want to happen here. So we talked about the nine SMA crossing above the 20 SMA. That's simple enough to do. All we're going to do is type in our simple moving AVG and then we're going to set the parameter length equal to nine and then we are going to use the um, function crosses above and we're going to go ahead and just for simplicity's sake just copy this um, if you've missed any of my other coding tutorial videos first off i have a whole seven series or seven video series playlist on my channel of how to code and think script that's going to help you a lot with the basics so even if what i just covered seemed a little too fast you might want to go check that out actually i'll link it in the top right right now but of course as always, if you ever need to find what the name of a function is or the accepted parameters of that function, literally just Google simple moving average think script and thinkorswim actually has an entire help documentation on their think script for free on the internet. It's very, very useful. I've spent hundreds of hours coding in think script and I still reference that document every single day it's very useful so if you didn't know like it was how did you know it was simple moving avg tray and then how did you know that the length parameter wasn't the first one so you had to type in length in order for it to pop up those kind of things all found out through the uh, think script help documentation anyway that was the um first sort of instance that needed to be true for our study to be true right the nine crosses above the 20 but also we said that the closing price needs to be above the 200 simple moving average we don't want to be buying crossovers on very weak stocks we only want to be buying crossovers on already strong stocks so um, we're going to go ahead and put in the uh, function and and we're going to type close is greater than once again simple moving average this time with the length over 200 close the parameter uh, close the parentheses sorry and that is our statement of truth right we now have everything written out that is going to make our study paint the arrow where we want it to paint the arrow but we haven't actually told the computer anything right all we've told it right now is the plot data is equal to the nine crossing the 20 and being above the 200 if we go ahead first off let's give this a name i'm just going to call it subscribe to the channel just something I thought of off the top of my head. Um, if I go ahead and hit apply, nothing's going to happen. We haven't actually told the computer what to do yet, right? It doesn't know, like, 
it's not plotting anything yet. We haven't given it any value to plot. We've just given it the true statement. So what we need to do is we need to put an if statement. We need to wrap our truth in an if statement. So if all of this is true, go down to the end, then close. That means now if obviously everything we want to happen happens, then the the parameter data will be plotted at the closing value of the candle. That's where the arrow is going to be drawn at the close of the candle in which all of these activities are true, right? And of course, on an if statement, we also need an else and we are going to use just double dot nan, meaning basically if this is all true, then plot it close. Else, if this isn't true, then don't do anything. That's what double dot nan means, right? So if we go ahead and hit apply now, you will also notice that once again, nothing happens. Guess what? With this sort of plot, we haven't told it to do anything, right? We haven't given it a painting strategy. We haven't told it what to plot, what to show. So what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down a couple of lines. I'm going to type in data dot. So this is a reference to my custom since we're within the same, obviously, piece of code here. I can reference my own custom functions. I'm referencing my data function here, and I'm going to pull in the out of the box function from thinkorswim, not one that I had to define myself, called set painting strategy and then this is going to accept a uh, parameter of painting strategy and painting strategy are all constants so i have to type in painting strategy dot once again being a constant this is how you reference conference uh constant sorry and then we are going to use the arrow up actually if i type this in again does it give you I think it might have there for a second given you a list of everything that you can do but we'll go over that later i'm going to call it arrow up and we're going to go ahead and close that. Now, if I hit apply, bada bing, bada boom, you are seeing on your chart, you are seeing now arrows being plotted at the closing price when the 9 SMA crosses above the 20 SMA and the close is above the 200 SMA. Just a couple of uh, more um, admin type things. I'm going to once again reference my data function and I'm going to call the function assign value color and this accepts a parameter of color which is also a constant. So color.green um, that is not to insult your intelligence, going to turn our arrows green. Actually, you know what? I, this is like a little bit of a off the off the fly kind of thing, but I actually think I might have liked it better blue. You can actually see it easier when it's blue. You can't really see when it's green. You know what? I take that back. I take back. I'm going to, I'm going to rewrite my script in my own YouTube video here. I don't want to make them green. Let's, I actually like to add cyan better. And then I'm going to go down. I'm going to do data. Once again, referencing my custom function, and then we're going to pull the function set line weight. And this simply accepts a integer. Um, I believe it's from one to 10. You can set it. That might be wrong. I kind of pulled that out of my butt, but it accepts an integer that will set the thickness of of the plots. You can see the arrows just got much thicker. If I made it five, you would see they'd go even crazier. If I made it one, they'd go back to that default size. I like to have mine set to three. That's obviously subjective. You can change that to whatever you want, but that is how you plot up arrows. Now, as I sort of foreshadowed in that set painting strategy, there is multiple different shapes under the painting strategy constant, and I'd like to cover a couple of more of those with you on this video as well. Earlier in the video, I've referenced the Thinkorswim Learning Center where you can get all the help documentation for your ThinkScript code. Well, this is that page for the painting strategy constant, and these are all the constants that you can call. These are all the different shapes that you can paint in Thinkorswim. Of course, you've got your arrow up as we just did. You've got all these other options though. And if you click on any of these, you will get the syntax for how you call it and you will get a sample of what it looks like. So once again, Google painting strategy think script, you'll easily be able to find this page and you'll be easily be able to see everything and every different shape that you can call using ThinkScript. Let's go ahead now and go over one more example with the squares shape.
Unless you're brand new to my channel, which if you are, welcome, hi, thank you for watching my video. You will know about my dot plot indicator down here that you're seeing at the bottom of the chart now. It's the one I've been working on the most recently. It's one that I love a lot. I'm actually beginning to use it in my own trading now that I've done a lot of back testing on it. An awesome, an awesome study. Um, and what it's doing is there's five lines here, and each one of these lines is a representation of a different indicator using that square painting strategy that we just talked about. So now instead of having to have five different indicators on your chart, you only need to have one indicator that encompasses all of them and simply uses different color squares to point to what that indicator is currently doing. And in this video, we're going to give a, uh, a small example of how you can set something like this up yourself. So once again, with a wiped clean chart, we are in our edit studies modal. I'm going to go ahead and create a new study. And we're actually going to name this plot this time because we're going to uh, have multiple different plots on this study. So I want them to make sense. Now, first little fun pro tip, the way in my dot plot uh, study that I get all of my lines to sort of appear horizontally like that is I just assign them to a static value. So I'm going to plot the RSI equal to two. That is just going to make the line straight up show at two horizontally. And actually, I forgot a step here. Since this is a lower study, since we don't want it to appear on our chart, but instead in a lower study box, we're going to go ahead and type just declare lower semicolon here up top. So now we have our plot RSI equals two. I'm going to come down and I'm going to do the RSI dot um, set painting strategy and then we are going to once again call the painting strategy constant of squares for this instance that's going to be all fine and dandy cool we now have squares plotted at two called rsi great great start now what we're going to do and we're going to make use of the set value color right or sorry assign value color function last time we just sort of through a sign value color in just because it was fun to change the color of the arrows. But here we're going to actually put useful, you know, functionality inside of that color. So if I go ahead and do um, RSI dot um, assign value color in this, in this parameter, um, of course it wants a, it wants a parameter of color. Sorry. So it wants something like color dot green. Um, oh my gosh, I can't type. Wow, I can't type. Color.green. That's what it's looking for, right? But if we go ahead and throw an if statement on that, that's where we can start to add some functionality and we can start to actually call our RSI value because so far we've actually done nothing with RSI other than call our call our function RSI, which doesn't actually do anything, right? So what we're going to do is I'm going to go if RSI, and this is a function, so of course it needs open close parameters. Um, if RSI is greater than, let's just call it 50, um, then color.green, else color.red. And I think you can start to see where this is going. So now look, at a glance now, you have an indicator, and, and, and this doesn't really matter. With one indicator, it doesn't really matter because, Trey, I could just turn on the RSI. I get that. But as you add more, you start to see increased functionality of how easily now you can read this chart. Hey, there is, you know, there's RSI weakness being shown or there's RSI strength being shown, right? And sort of, let me, let me just give you, sorry. Let me slow down a little bit. Let me give you one more uh, sort of pro tip. So I have my chart extended to the right a little bit. So over here, you see these cyan uh, sort of dots. That's because there is no RSI. There's nothing there. So what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to type in if close then to else double dot nan. I believe that's what I do. Um, yes. So that's if there is a current price, then it's plotted at two else it's not plotted. That just gets rid of those uh, dots at the end that aren't actually there on anything. So um, that's not really necessary, but a little pro tip. So let's go ahead and add one more so you can start to see some added functionality of this. We're going to plot MACD and we're going to plot this at if close then one else double dot nan. Um, once again, this is just going to make it plot. If I go ahead, actually, we need to set a painting strategy. Let me go ahead and type in MACD dot 
set painting. I don't know why I'm not just copying this. If I was smart, I would have just copied that. But at this point, I've already started typing and don't feel like stopping. Um, so now you can see that you have great. You have two plots down here now, uh, two horizontal lines. That's awesome. So for this one, we'll do MACD dot assign value color and we'll do if the uh, MACD is greater than two um, then color dot green else color dot red close parentheses and um, semicolon and you will now see that that also is functioning as intended you are getting a you know a quick read now of your RSI value of your MACD value. And you can start to see, I'm not gonna sit here and just keep going and going and going here, but you can see how you can keep continue to add functionality to an indicator like this using the painting strategy constant, using the automated drawing in Thinkorswim in order to make your charts easier to read, in order to customize your charts that fit your trade strategy, in order to help you more quickly analyze charts so that you can find more trade setups once again, that match your trade strategy. Hopefully you found value in this video. If you did, please take a half second, hit the like button. Once again, if you are interested in thinkorswim codes, I've spent hundreds of hours coding my own and I've made all the ones that at least I found useful available on my website, daytradingstrategies.net. Link at the top of the description down below. Go check that out. But once again, on this YouTube channel, I want to try to give you as much free information as I can as well. So hopefully you found value in this video. Make sure you like, make sure you subscribe. With all that being said, that's going to do it for this one. But I will link you to the video covering my dot plot indicator. So if you're interested in learning more about how my full dot plot indicator works, check out that video on the outro screen next. Trading stocks. He talks about trading stocks. It's important for you Americans and other international individuals to learn about stocks. <laughs>